this has come through the post this morning it's a product from evotech performance this is something i've been waiting for for a while pretty well packaged shipped within a couple of days which is pretty good i'm going to be fitting this to my 2012 street triple r triumph street triple r and to put it quite simply it's a radiator cover this is exactly how it ships it's made from two millimeter cnc machined aircraft grade aluminium features a really nice evotech performance embossed logo into this powder coated grill really robust strong product i'm going to be fitting this to my radiator of my bike for the simple reason that it's something i've never considered fitting really um, but a couple of people have told me that it's something that i need to put on because of the the, the position that radiators are situated on motorcycles because they sit right behind the wheel they obviously take the radiator take a lot of the brunt of anything that's on the road that flicks up that's likely to damage your radiator if you have a look at these pictures you'll see some of the damage that can be caused by simple things like stone chips weather etc it's not something i want to be faced with either out on a ride or at worst if i'm miles away from home on a bit of a tour having a damaged radiator leaking coolant all over the road this product as i say available from evotech performance priced at 60 pound and 99 pence including shipping it's a necessity i would say it's not a modification part in any way it doesn't come with any bolts it uses the existing bolts that are already on your radiator of your bike made in the uk doesn't attach with any cable ties so once it's on it's there it's going to deflect anything that's thrown at your radiator and protect it from damage a replacement radiator for my bike is somewhere in the region of about 474 pounds at best you could possibly find one on ebay for about 200 pounds but as you'll see from these pictures that i've just shown you that are second hand ones you're looking at somewhere in the region of around 180 200 quid plus and they're not in the best of conditions we're going to be having a look in a minute at how simple this is to fit to the bike really well made nice finished product the only thing that evotech do state is that because it's such a robust item the honeycomb mesh can impede some of the airflow to your radiator now what they say with that is that if you're on a particularly warm ride out just monitor your engines temperature if needs be stop once in a while let your engine cool down before you set off this is probably more important if you're riding in countries or climates where the ambient temperature is a lot higher right let me just ex explain how a radiator works and this isn't designed to patronize anybody this is just for people out there that know that a bike has a radiator but they're not sure what it does okay so this is your engine for your bike okay you've got all these moving parts pistons moving up and down creating heat so you've got all this this heat flying around on the inside of here so you have a you have an inlet here and this is where your coolant comes in this is your engine coolant so this pumps into your engine moves around all these parts draws the heat out this is a really simplistic explanation it draws all the heat out of these moving parts and it needs to get rid of that heat so it pumps it back out so this heat comes out here so you've got cold going in hot coming out so this is your radiator okay so your hot tube your hot coolant comes in here and it's going to be fed back out of the bottom as cold coolant to come back and repeat this process so within a radiator you have 
a pipe that ineffectively does this. Okay, so as the as the coolant's moving around this pipe, it's cooling down. That's helped by wind coming in from this side and on on this. So it's you've got with the air as you're riding forward, the wind's coming that way, and at the back you've got a fan helping to blow cold air onto it this way. All right, now. You'll see on some of the pictures that I've shown you already the damage of the damaged radiators. In addition to this this pipe, the whole thing is covered in in like a mesh of these tiny little zigzag, very thin pieces of metal, and that makes up the bulk of your radiator. This is the bit that you see over the top all these little zigzags the problem is that because these are so small and so thin you can damage them just by pushing them with your finger so you imagine something like a stone or a, or a rock comes flying off of the road and hits one of these think you've got a big hole or a lot of damage in there now as these fins get damaged they're going to be ineffective in helping cool down your coolant within your system so if you get a few of these on there, or at worst, you get something that actually bursts this pipe, your coolant's going to come piddling out, big puddle in the middle of the road, damage, ka -ching, looking at big bucks. So the other problem as well is that because of where a radiator is situated on a bike, it's right behind, again, crude drawing. Most radiators on bikes your tank seat etc most radiators sit here some are better protected than others depending on if there's a fairing mine hasn't got a fairing so it's just totally exposed so anything flying this way is gonna damage this radiator radiator guard on bounces off just deflects so anything that's big enough that's going to damage your radiator guard, imagine the damage that that would have done to your radiator. It's a no-brainer. So we'll have a look now how this fits to the bike, and we'll take some before and after shots, see how they look. So let's have a look at how we fit the guard. The first thing we need to do is remove the three bolts that hold the radiator cowl in place. Please take note that the first bolt behind the indicator is longer than the other three. So it doesn't really matter which order you remove these bolts in. Next one we're going to take out is the bolt that holds in the indicator and the best thing to do there is once you've removed the bolt you just pull the indicator, give it a little wiggle and just let it hang loose by its own wire. Then remove the top bolt which is a shorter bolt than the one behind the indicator, the bolt underneath the top one same length as the bolt at the top. Once you've got these three bolts removed, it's the same process on both sides. You get a wiggle the radiator cowl and it'll move just enough to give you access to the bracket that's bolted to the radiator itself. Using a 10mm spanner, you just undo these two bolts. You can see here where these bolts can go back through the bracket and attach the radiator guard. So we're just going to take that bracket off of there, 10 millimeter bolt. They're not very long threads, they only do take a couple of seconds to undo. This whole process of changing the radiator guard should really only take you about 5-10 minutes maximum. I'd say even for somebody who's a novice, with spanners it's a very very easy job it literally is just a case of removing three bolts on the radiator on the radiator cowl and the one that holds the indicator on and then removing the bolts that hold onto the bracket both sides and then you can put the radiator in place make sure that you get the radiator guard the right way up the last thing you want to do is put everything back together and then find out 
it's the wrong way up. Put the radiator guard into place and then it's just a case of reassembling in exactly the same way that you've disassembled it. So put the radiator guard in place, put the bracket back on, put the 10 millimeter bolts back into place. Can be a little bit fiddly. I managed it on my own with no problem. What I usually like to do when I'm fitting something like this is just either screw it in by hand or just nip it up enough so it's held and then go around and just tighten it up. So once you've got the bracket back on over the top of the radiator guard, And then put the bolts back in the radiator cowl again the two short bolts go in the front I've put these in by hand just to make sure that I didn't get them cross threaded the longer bolt goes to the rear of the radiator cowl the indicator pops back into place and then secured with its own bolt. This is a totally different shaped bolt so you can't get this mixed up. And I suggest for the bolt that holds the indicator in, it is easier if you have a long handled Allen key. I didn't, I just had a, a short one as you can see. Luckily the indicator does have some flex on it so you, it, it will move out of the way. And there's, a, there's the job done. The one thing that I will add is before I actually fit my radiator guard, I just give my radiator a quick clean, just make sure there were nothing in there. Just have a look at these before and after pictures. You can see how exposed the radiator is. So anything hitting that wheel or hitting the front of the bike is now going to be deflected by the radiator guard. These pictures don't really do it justice, but it is a fantastic piece of kit. Please check out the links below for this and other products available from Evotech Performance.